Hello and welcome to the second lecture of philosophy of science. The first lecture was just a primer, primer precisely because uh, we have not talked about philosophy of science as such. We were discussing more about what is the theory, how uh, the philosophy of science course will go on and so on. We have also discussed that uh, the Newton Smith book on the philosophy of science is something which will become as the base book for uh, this course. So I will be taking uh, chapters one to seven from this book. And apart from that, there are a few other materials also, which we will be uh, dealing with in this course. So uh, given that understanding, I thought that uh, uh, since it's the first lecture in that sense, so we will be discussing the very basics of uh, philosophy uh, and the things which we will require for philosophy of science. So now, as you can see, that I have started with this whole philosophy. So the first uh, terminology or the first uh, thing which should be very clear in our minds is uh, what does exactly the word philosophy or uh, what is the meaning of philosophy and how we deal with uh, philosophy in our subjects. So that has to be the first understanding. Now what is philosophy? Uh, usually you will find that uh, in most uh, books or uh, in some kind of, um, I will say, introductory material, uh, people will define philosophy as uh, love for wisdom, right? Because the meaning of the word is love for wisdom. Because as you can see, philo and sophie. So philo means love and or phi. And sophie is basically wisdom. So it's love for wisdom. But what kind of love for wisdom is uh, philosophy is something which is a very important question for us. Now, uh, philosophy has become a derogatory term as well in uh, the whole uh, world, I guess so, because if you are from philosophy, people will not, like, uh, will not like to talk to you or will not like to discuss much or you, you will be termed as like very abstract by nature. You do not understand things. You do not... Um, uh, you you are not very practical by nature, you are non-empirical by nature and so on. So this kind of understandings has come or you are very idealist as like in the last class as we were discussing that uh, people have very different understanding of what is idealism, right? Or uh, how it is uh, different from realism. So you are idealist and this and that. So all these things are there. But philosophy... Uh, if you ask me, is uh, having a very simple understanding for me. Uh, though there can be n number of definitions in which uh, it talks about because it's a kind of inquiry, right? And I will call it the quest for why. Right? So uh, I, I may not put this the quest for why that means why something is the case or what is the nature of something and so on you will find that philosophy discusses uh, it in detail right and allow me to tell you a small story as well philosophy became a science uh, or philosophy became a discipline for that matter i should not call it a science right because we are studying philosophy of science and science uh, is something which is different from philosophy at least uh, for uh, people like us who belong to uh, sciences or belong to technology will not consider philosophy to be a science rightly uh, so as well now what is philosophy Philosophy is any kind of academic endeavor. In fact, if you start from the very basics, you will find that these subjects, which now are divided into different disciplines, were studied under the same whole. You can call it academia, you can call it philosophy, you can call it just studies, right? Everything was philosophy. Now, slowly and slowly, disciplines specialized, right? And they slowly and slowly came out, right? If you read uh, Newton's book, it is also natural philosophy, right? Even if he, he is a stalwart of physics, he is a stalwart of science. But uh, the book name is natural philosophy because at that point of time, science and philosophy were not differentiated from each other. One of the recent disciplines which has come out of philosophy is uh, psychology. And psychology is considered as a science. Or uh, many people consider psychology to be a very, very uh, developed science, right? 
Uh, the same goes for economics for that matter that economics is also considered as a science by a lot of people but uh, like people like Carlyle will say that uh, it's a dismal science because the question of uh, whether they are science or not is something which is very questionable. We will come to science as such at a later stage and you will find enough of material why something is called science and something and uh, I am dividing this lecture into two parts. In the first part we will be discussing few things like philosophy, epistemology, metaphysics and what is science or what is the basic understanding of science and then once we will have a very basic understanding of science we will go in the second part of this lecture we will go for uh, an example an example why or how science when it is defined in a way as we will be defining it in this part of the lecture uh, fails or creates some problems so we need to redefine science or we need to re-understand science and so on but strictly speaking philosophy is not much but an any kind of academic endeavor which it used to be before and even till date it is an endeavor the disciplines which came out they became separate disciplines, they became very developed disciplines as well, are not considered philosophy anymore. The rest of the things which are left with philosophy, if you see these two things, epistemology and metaphysics, form the core of philosophy. Though there are other branches as well, like axiology, right, which talks about values, or um, aesthetics, which talks about beauty. Uh, logic as well, but logic is not uh, confined to philosophy. It is uh, uh, mathematics, it is also computer science, it is also linguistics, and it is so many disciplines more as well. So, uh, if you see, mostly uh, philosophy is understood as epistemology and metaphysics. Now, what is epistemology and what, are what, what is metaphysics is something which we should discuss. So, before that, let me take off this word philosophy. So philosophy, generally speaking, will be a quest to know about something, right? Now, what is the subject matter of philosophy? Let us try to understand. <clears throat> now, I am not removing science because this is something which we will be deliberating upon a little bit later. What is epistemology? It's basically the theory of knowledge. Now, how you understand this theory of knowledge? It is, it is nothing but the theory of knowledge. Now, what is theory of knowledge? That how and what are the ways through which we acquire knowledge, right? Like uh, people can say that we acquire knowledge through perception or we acquire knowledge through some kind of logic or we acquire knowledge through some kind of empirical uh, data. We acquire knowledge through some kind of verification. So there can be a number of ways through which you, know, you can also acquire knowledge through comparison. You can acquire knowledge through the absence of something as well. Because if you come to Indian philosophy, you will find absence in itself is uh, also a um, mode through which uh, you acquire knowledge. So there are a lot of ways. You also acquire knowledge through postulation, right? Because uh, if you find certain things and then there are certain things which uh, is, uh, um, say, unavailable, so you postulate that theory for it, that this must have been the way, right? Like one of the postulation or how uh, we use postulation can be understood by the understanding of, uh, say, Big Bang Theory. So Big Bang Theory is nothing but a postulation, if you see. So all these things uh, are there that uh, how this knowledge is acquired, right? So that is basically one of the parts of uh, philosophy which has still not uh, gone out, right? So as I told you that philosophy was nothing but the sum total of all the academics uh, uh, right from the very beginning because everybody used to study everything beforehand. Then things got specialized and we studied. Like uh, you must be knowing that there are a lot of um, universities where there is a department of mathematics and there is a department of statistics. And you might not be aware of, though in our school days what we do, what we study statistics and mathematics, right? But if you are very clear about this understanding, mathematics is a um, exact science. On the other hand, statistics is a probable science, right? So this is something which you understand. And this is something which uh, by calculating the mean, median, mode and so many other things you have an idea. So mathematics and statistics are not the same thing. 
but department of mathematics and statistics are there in a different uh, like in our university we have department of mathematics but we do not have a separate department of statistics i do not know whether people uh, teach statistics over there but there are some uh, universities uh, in this world including in india as well you will find the name department of mathematics and statistics fine there are some universities in this world i do not know whether uh, it is uh, in our country as uh, well or not there is a department of mathematics and there is a department of statistics and the interesting thing is that they hate each other because the mathematics people cannot withstand statisticians they say that statistics is so probable and they are um, calculating certain things which can never have an exact understanding so um, they make mockery of these uh, statisticians and on the other hand the statisticians also make fun of mathematic uh, mathematicians because they say that these people talk about abstract things they are as good as philosophers or they are as bad as philosophers right so these kind of understandings are there but uh, to tell you the truth the thing is that they are very different by nature and they are very developed uh, as per disciplines so uh, they uh, all these things were basically the part uh, or basically in the same whole but slowly and slowly as you know that there are so many departments in um, electronics and communication engineering electronics and instrumentation right electrical and electronics you know these differentiations are uh, getting very uh, i will say profound these days very pronounced these days right so once a discipline develops it gets divided into different parts so it is the thing so philosophy was basically the sum total of any kind of academics but now slowly and slowly all these disciplines has come out like as i told you that the last one uh, to my knowledge to the uh, best of my knowledge and belief uh, was psychology which came out and uh, it is now a very developed uh, i will say discipline though there are questions about whether it is a science or not like economics many people uh, consider it to be a science many people do not consider it to be a science the same goes for psychology as well mathematics in some universities is studied under arts for that matter you can have a ba as well as a, uh, as an uh, as a uh, uh, ma in uh, mathematics as well uh, so all these things are there so we need to understand that how we understand something is a science and how we need to differentiate it from say arts or humanities or something like that anyways so epistemology is basically the theory of knowledge that how we acquire knowledge right so this is something which has to be um, it has to be there in our mind and it is core philosophical concept right because not many people will be working on epistemology though epistemological studies are taken by different disciplines as well but still it is one of the uh, i will say forte of um, philosophy right and this is another uh, thing which we should be very much aware of now let us come to the third part that is metaphysics now metaphysics is also a word which is uh, the bread and butter of philosophy right and it is also a discipline and even if there are epistemological studies in different disciplines but i guess so in meta metaphysics is purely philosophical even if um, there can be some religious studies which will be also dealing with metaphysics now what metaphysics discusses hmm? one way of understanding metaphysics or the subject area of metaphysics will be that it discusses something uh, which is beyond physics that means something which is beyond the physical world the nature of being right so something like the nature of being or uh, what is the nature of truth or what is the nature of reality so all these things will be discussed under uh, metaphysics it is also differentiated vis-a-vis -vis with uh, another word called ontology right uh, you will find this word as well which or with which it is also differentiated something okay so what is the difference between ontology and metaphysics usually they are very related terms they are usually sometimes also uh, uh, say explained as like one is the synonym of other but if you see the basic difference ontology talks about what exists in the nature 
right so it will be more concerned with the existence of objects what are the things which can exist and to find what will be the nature of those things which exist is dealing with metaphysics but in the nutshell if you see so metaphysics and ontology are very interrelated concept and uh, metaphysics sometimes uh, will encapsulate the understanding of ontology so ontology will be a subset of uh, metaphysics where the basic idea of uh, understanding uh, metaphysics will be that uh, it talks about something which is beyond physics and which is uh, like something where we need to understand the nature of certain things which usually is not the subject matter of physics right so that kind of understanding or that kind of studies are usually taken by metaphysics like for example uh, the uh, study of God or whether the God exists or not will be a metaphysical inquiry right but it's not only about God it's about a lot of things in fact but whatever it's the case you need to understand these basic concepts before we jump into science now as you might be aware of that uh, science these days is consensus forging we will come to this understanding in the later part of the uh, course but for the time being remember that science is nothing but consensus forging where we have the consensus that this is something which needs to be understood as science and a lot of people a lot of people who are having the denomination of being a scientist accepts something and it will be considered as science or uh, if it is not uh, accepted by those people it may become a pseudoscience it may become an art it may become a humanities it becomes a dismal science and so on there can be a lot of terminologies for it now uh, this science wars as people say because there is a lot of hue and cry whether this has to be considered as a science allow me to share uh, with you like if you uh, since you are students of technology mostly but also there might be some students of sciences uh, but uh, i don't think so that uh, anybody in this course uh, is from basic humanities or social sciences if you read basic humanities and social sciences there is also uh, introductory books which we like to prove that our inquiry is a science somehow that understanding that science is something which is more exact which is having a method or which is uh, verifiable or which is this that is um, a big enterprise these days and people will like to prove that they are um, science right so even if they belong to the sub area of social science or arts or humanities they will like to call themselves as science right so introductory books will like to prove that uh, uh, in their introductory chapters uh, and so on so what is it which makes science so interesting and what is it that makes science science right so you can also read that it comes from the word scientia and what does it mean and blah 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 so i will not go into all those things rather it is my um, it is my duty to make you aware of certain things which is uh, which is more like uh, we, which we consider as like this is what we call as science now sciences will have something called a scientific method right so this is something which we all agree that sciences work with some kind of methods like if you remember in your school days uh, we used to call biology, we used to call physics, we used to call uh, chemistry for that matter as sciences. Even mathematics is a science for that matter. Um, but we were not calling mathematics as science as such. But under our general science, we will have first, first we used to have general science in our primary schools. Then slowly and slowly as we come to the middle school and the higher school, so we will divide it into physics, chemistry, uh, biology. You know? So if you go to even higher secondary, so this biology also gets divided into zoology and botany and so on. So what makes something a science? So if you ask a school student, he or she will say that uh, science, um, it is having practicals. 
right so this is one understanding that we have a method right or we go for experiments right so experiments conducting experiments and uh, um, there is a practical period for that or a practical class for that also makes it a science right so there is a demonstration of whatever we are studying in theory there is a practical for it so all these things uh, make us aware of that this is what we call as science right and uh, there is nothing wrong in that or incorrect in that it definitely makes something a science so what we are very clear about is that sciences have a method a very clear cut uh, understanding of a method through which sciences progress sciences uh, go for uh, revolutions as well they prove also certain things wrong in them and go for the next version right so even if like uh, uh, like how many of you remember that pluto was the ninth planet of our solar system most of you right because when you were in school you first heard or read even that pluto is the ninth planet of our solar system then something happened and pluto ceased to be the ninth planet of our solar system and they became uh, it became no more or it is no more the planet of our solar system now we have up to eight planets in our solar system so some change has come i will discuss about all these things in the later part of the course and so many other interesting things as well that why uh, pluto ceases to be the planet of our solar system now allow me to tell you again when i was in school we and uh, we were in a missionary school which used to be very competitive by nature and uh, used to be taught uh, through not only course books and uh, guides and all these things but also something called refresher books that you need to study these refresher books in order to you know have better grasp and uh, because everybody will write the same answer in the board examination so you need to write better and uh, unless you uh, write better you will not get good marks so you need to read uh, a lot of refresher books and refresher books always used to contain a lot of information a lot of new information like during those days we were um, i i cannot remember them or i cannot spell it out for you we used to be told around 14 to 15 planets because uh, the nasa and so many other scientists used to find every now and then some planet and i'm, I'm not joking it is the truth every now and then some planet will come and it will be in the book or some newspaper cutting will come that look there is something which has been seen and it will be the next planet and it is named for the time being like this and that and um, we used to remember them because when some question will come so we will put those informations in the answer and it will become a very good answer right and we will get good marks and this and that so uh, at that point of time there is this um, in vogue what people used to do is to try to remember a lot of planets because uh, they used to think that our uh, uh, solar system is actually having more than nine planets so up to pluto you will find it in the book as the same as in your case but your uh, say juniors your siblings who are in school these days do not consider uh, the uh, uh, pluto as the planet right so all these things are happening so uh, something is changing some method has come or some 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 definition has come because of that some changes has come so all these things which we will be discussing but anyways but everybody or every one of us will agree that there is something called scientific method and this scientific method is something which distinguishes science from non science so uh, and what is this scientific method is all about there can be different methods for uh, doing science right because people do science in very different fashion some people are theoretical physicists some people are classical physicists some people do a lot of experimental study some people go for some kind of other studies statistical statistical studies some go for a time period study and so on so uh, they have very different methods but definitely there is a method on the other hand if if you ask people from humanities like people from philosophy that what is your method so we will be very blank uh, what kind of method which we use do you use experiments we'll say no do you take calculations no do you go for any kind of observations no so what do you do i don't know what we do but we do something uh so but that right now the question is not about us right uh, not about these people from philosophy or humanities right now people from sciences 
So sciences definitely have a method. Now, what that method ponders upon, and this is the interesting thing, that everybody will again agree that there is something called verifiability. Verifiability, right? So if you can verify a result, if you can verify a study, then definitely it is the cup of uh, tea of science, right? So the cup of tea of science, the tea cup of science, the coffee cup of science, thus consists something called verifiability, right? So you need to understand that it has to be verifiable in order to be called something as science, right? So whatever you will like to talk or bring uh, under the umbrella of science has to be verifiable. Right. So if you can verify it, it is definitely science and there is no question about it. And if you cannot verify it, then there can be a lot of questions about it. And this is strongly the idea which you will find in most of the uh, places or people that verification is the goddamn principle hmm? or the uh, underline of uh, any method which will be scientific by nature. So in the next part of this lecture, and this was the first part of the lecture, in the next part of the lecture, what we will discuss is that how verification works. And we will also take an example that how verification can uh, actually spell some kind of problems for scientific inquiry. Thank you. So welcome to the second part or the final part of the lecture, which we will discuss about the curious case of cholera. Now, you all might be aware of cholera and the um, epidemic which it used to be at uh, during the 18th and the 19th century. So, we will talk about cholera. But before that, if you remember, uh, we discussed in the last class that uh, what is empiricism. Uh, empiricism usually also believes and depends on the verifiability principle, right? Like uh, we <clears throat> empirically justify or empirically calculate or empirically find certain uh, results and we say that this is something which is applicable. So it is an interesting thing, right? Uh, that uh, through empiricist understanding or ideologies or through verification, we can always prove whether something is uh, an acceptable theory or something is not an acceptable theory. So during the 18th and 19th century, when you, uh, cholera used to play an havoc, it was uh, an epidemic during those days. It was considered that cholera used to be caused by a gas, which is found in the swamp areas, right? Uh, the gas name was miasmus. So miasmus gas was responsible for cholera. This was the understanding because it used to be somewhere in the like we know that methane is also called a marsh gas right so similarly that the places where there are swamps and all so this gas uh, is coming out from uh, that place and uh, it is the reason for cholera so this was the understanding but john snow he came with this theory that look it's not because of the gas it is because of the drinking water the contaminated drinking water because of which cholera used uh, cholera takes place or uh, cholera is spread so uh, they cleaned the swamps they changed the tube wells and all these things over those places and they could find that it is uh, it is a very uh, apt theory and uh, it was perfect so uh, they said that yes this uh, finding is proper and they could uh, put uh, a stop on this outbreak of cholera so you can see that empiricism works right because uh, you can prove uh, with the help of experiments that uh, this is the case and because of that um, the cholera used to take place now this theory was even taken further by robert koch who said that it is because of the microorganisms as you know that uh, cholera is caused by bacteria so these are microorganisms the germ theory of disease so he took forward this theory of uh, John Snow and said that it is not exactly contaminated water but the contamination of water and what it contains it's basically containing some microorganisms the bacteria which is responsible for cholera you must be knowing about the scientific name of it I usually do not remember them 
so whatever so again till here also you will find that empiricism wins because empiricism or experimental verification is something which is the heart and soul of science as we talk about and it uh, definitely proves that uh, how something happens or what is the reason for it <clears throat> now there is an interesting character a person called Pettenkoffer he was also a scientist he was not at all convinced with this understanding and he said that look this is not the reason the reason is something different and blah 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 whatever is the reason you can read this story in fact you can read this story not only in the book which we have prescribed for this course but also in the internet you will find a lot of stories on this so Pettenkoffer was not convinced so somebody uh, said that this glass is having that contaminated water of which can cause cholera he drank that water because he took this challenge that this water is not the cause of the drinking water the microorganism the contamination and all these things is not the cause of cholera and therefore i am drinking it he drank it and nothing happened to it again the theory went back right or empiricism in and if you call this here empiricism wins then when he drank the water and nothing happened so he could also prove that uh, cholera is not taking place because of drinking water or because of microorganisms what this theory or what this story suggests we know now why cholera is taking place or what is the reason of cholera but is empiricism the way through which you can uh, you can justify something uh, that okay this is a scientific theory hmm. let me give you an example so that you understand it better how many of you have watched a movie called thank you for smoking you might not have uh, heard even about that movie and if you have heard and if you have seen so you know something uh, there is a concept called lobbyist lobbyists okay they lobby they lobby for certain things now big tobacco companies big cigarette companies they have good amount of lobbyists who every now and then here and there keep proving that uh, smoking does not cause lung cancer or smoking does not uh, cause a lot of other kind of diseases which usually people talk about now you see that on a cigarette packet there is a big uh, mark of like you will get this disease or that disease and so on he, but this was something which was suggested long time back but uh, the big companies uh, came out with a lot of studies and they still refute this thing that smoking causes cancer or any kind of uh, other ailments and so on on the other hand there are a lot of studies which also says that smoking causes cancer <clears throat> and uh, all these things there is a recent debate which is going on that whether we have conclusive evidence to prove that whether smoking causes these kind of things or not and uh, there are a lot of studies which says the same for butter and cheese as well that they are also or equally fatal uh, as tobacco right so all these studies are based on some kind of experimental studies now I know a lot of people who never smoked even a single cigarette a day and uh, they died of lung cancer and I also and that too at a very early age say 42 43 and they died of lung cancer even if they were not smokers I uh, I know at least one person who was not even a passive smoker like he or she was in the environment uh, of uh, uh, people who smoke a lot similarly I also know a person who recently died she was in fact 101 years and uh, she is uh, she was the grandmother of one of our uh, um, uncles you can call and she was a chimney she used to smoke, smoke not less than 20 to 30 beauties a day okay and she died at the age of 101 and she was perfectly fit she was tested many a times but she was not having any cancer now if you take that lady's account who died recently 
uh, and not because of cancer uh, and smoked a lot so these kind of people once these kind of people are taken in the experimental setup so they always will like to prove or people whom who will uh, you know find these kind of people who are smokers and who are not having any kind of disease will always go on to prove that okay this is not the reason of cancer right on the other hand there will be a lot of people who smoke and have ailments like that if you take those people into consideration and prove that this is the reason for cancer so this question of experimental verification in itself is questionable right so given that kind of understanding is empiricism and i'm not saying anything i'm not pa passing a value judgment again try to understand that whether something causes cancer or something is not the reason for cancer and so on what i'm saying is that it raises some questions on the verification principle like pettenkoffer what pettenkoffer proved took this theories uh, uh, back for uh, several years because then again it was understood that he must be having a lot of acids in his stomach or the bacteria in that glass of water might have died before he uh, drank that but does not matter what he went on to prove that look if this is the reason for uh, cholera i am drinking it and i am not getting cholera so this is not a sure shot or this is not the reason for cholera so people argue for those things so the question which i will like to leave in your mind for today's class and uh, the thing which comes out from this class is that is experimental studies the only way through which or even a way through which you can call something a science so ponder upon it and we will come in the next class